Hello, Trinity. It's uh, Good Friday. I'm thankful uh, to be with you on this afternoon. It's a beautiful day outside. And uh, we're going to be looking to our Savior Jesus on this day that we remember he was crucified. I was talking to my kids this morning about why it's called Good Friday. How could it be good if Jesus was crucified on this day? And they uh, gave me uh, what I'm about to tell you. First of all, it's good because Jesus died for our sins. He died out of mercy. The mercy of God was displayed when Jesus died for our sins in our place. But even more, the other reason is because Easter's coming. Because this isn't the end of the story. Jesus' death is not the end, but Jesus' victory and resurrection. And so uh, today we, we mourn our sins and we mourn the death of our Savior, but we also hold to him in hope. And so I invite you to that with me and with Christina as well as we pray and sing and hear from Scripture in Luke chapter 23. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus our Lord who was crucified. We wonder at the incredible love that you show for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ came to die for us, that you would give your only Son, eternal God, to die in the place of sinful, finite, little humans like us. It's a wonder, Lord, and we praise you. Uh, fix our eyes on the cross now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's sing together. Uh, if you know this one, you can sing along or just listen. This is uh, called Man of Sorrows.
Luke chapter 23, verse 1. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered them, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection, started in the city, and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time, he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked. And he delivered Jesus over to their will. Sing together, Rock of Ages. Jesus. 
Luke chapter 23, picking up in verse 26. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. And they laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me. In paradise. I invite you to listen to this song, to sing along if you're able, as we reflect here in the shadow of the cross. <laughs> Smile. 
Luke chapter 23, verse 44. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. When Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly, this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation. And the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. When they returned, then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. This is the word of the Lord. Let's uh, sing together in response. If you join me singing, Jesus paid it all.
leave you with a reading of a prayer. It's a long prayer from a book called The Valley of Vision. The title of it is called Love Lusters at Calvary. It shines and shimmers there. My Father, enlarge my heart, warm my affections, open my lips, supply words that proclaim love lusters at Calvary. There grace removes my burdens and heaps them on thy Son, made a transgressor a curse and sin for me. There the sword of thy justice smote the man, thy fellow. There thy infinite attributes were magnified and infinite atonement was made. There infinite punishment was due and infinite punishment was endured. Christ was all anguish that I might be all joy, cast off that I might be brought in, trodden down as an enemy that I might be welcomed as a friend, surrendered to hell's worst that I might attain heaven's best, stripped that I might be clothed, wounded that I might be healed, athirst that I might drink, tormented that I might be comforted, made a shame that I might inherit glory, enter darkness that I might have eternal light. My Savior wept that all tears might be wiped from my eyes, groaned that I might have endless song, endured all pain that I might have unfading health, bore a thorny crown that I might have a glory diadem, bowed his head that I might uplift mine, experienced reproach that I might receive welcome, closed his eyes in death that I might gaze on unclouded brightness, expired that I might forever live. O Father, who spared not thine only Son, that thou mightest spare me, all this transfer thy love designed and accomplished. Help me to adore thee by lips and life. O that my every breath might be ecstatic praise, my every step buoyant with delight. As I see my enemies crushed, Satan baffled, defeated, destroyed, sin buried in the ocean of reconciling blood, Hell's gates closed, heaven's portal open. Go forth, O conquering God, and show me the cross, mighty to subdue, comfort, and save. I leave you with that comfort, brothers and sisters. The third day is coming. God bless you.